And now on to our Asperitas Tech Showcase, Immersion Cooling, the technology of today enabling sustainable data center growth. Our presenter today is Michael Boratius, the CCO at Asperitas. Michael has been a frequent speaker at data center industry events and has been included twice in the Dutch Top 100 list for innovators on sustainability. Michael has been working through 2010 on clean and green technology solutions, projects, and business. With sustainability being mission critical to data centers, innovations in cooling prepares them for a sustainable future of high density and performance hardware and facility efficiency anywhere. This talk will delve into the award-winning Asperitas solution in paving the way towards a sustainable future, including a practical use case. I'll get back to you as we get to your questions, but right now, over to my call and get those questions in, folks. So thank you uh, for the introduction. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here and, uh, and talk a little bit about what Asperitas can do, especially to create some sustainable impact. So about Asperitas, we have been around since 2014-15 when we started to developing and we have brought our first technology to the market in 2017. Um, we see it as our mission to uh, provide thermal management of the highest performing technologies uh, using the lowest amount of energy. Uh, we think that's really key uh, looking into the future. Um, at the same time, enabling our customers to deliver future-proof and climate-neutral data center infrastructure and provide uh, the environment so they can actually provide the most optimal digital services, right? Um, at the Spiritus, we think that uh, immersion cooling is the only sustainable way to power the IT loads um, of the future and build a climate neutral data center industry. Yeah, so quickly on the Spiritus, um, again, we, uh, we have uh, been starting our journey in 2017 on the market. Since then, we have been winning numerous of awards, especially uh, received quite some recognition on the sustainable impact. Um, with our technology, including the new energy challenge and um, uh, Europa's green tech uh, starter scale up of the year, um, and most recently um, recognition for the innovation as a cooling product, uh, which is great because it comes from the industry. Um, you'll notice we work closely together with Shell, one of our, our investors as well. Um, we have a collaboration on the development of immersion cooling fluids. Um, and of course, we partner in different consortia to create the standards and the environments that uh, immersion cooling basically requires to scale, including uh, the open compute community. So when we look at the data center industry, um, and today's talk is all about sustainable impact, um, if it's up to us, it's about enabling sustainable growth actually for data centers. Um, there's a great demand for data centers anywhere. And uh, we see certain challenges that um, is now blocking or slowing down this growth path of the industry and, and therefore our digital economy. Um, the first driver we see now strongly um, from the, coming from the market uh, that's driving liquid cooling adoption is performance requirements. We see the next generation hardware and the OEM roadmaps for um, chips, CPUs and GPUs and with higher uh, thermal performance requirements, it becomes a real challenge to cool them. Um, and there's a strong need for advanced cooling solutions like immersion cooling. Um, otherwise, you don't have an optimal environment and density and performance um, that you probably would require as a user. At the same time, it's very challenging to do so um, in an efficient and cost-effective manner. It, it's all possible to build a data center that meets all of the highest performance requirements, also with air cooling, but efficiency is going down and costs are going up. At the same time, we see that data centers need to be provided and operated in challenging climate zones and in more zones than ever. Um, so this is definitely a challenge if you combine this with the performance requirement that we see now. Um, to do so, sustainability brings another challenge on the table. And um, I think this now went, went from basically a nice to have to a must have in certain regions. We have seen data centers in certain regions um, not getting access to strategic sites, um, making site selection quite challenging if certain sustainability requirements are not met. And of course, it discounts for energy efficiency, but as well heat reuse is quite a topic now in Europe and in some regions, an obligation or a really strong demand from the society. Um, but as well, uh, access to water and consumption, it's now I think in the top three of KPIs being measured if it comes to sustainability. And um, this can all be changed with immersion cooling, um, which I think is a great advantage, uh, depending, of course, on the scenario and the use case you're looking into. And the last one we see is that uh, data centers need to be closer to end users as well. Um, and that's maybe a very short summary of 
um, explaining a development where we see data centers uh, in different kind of environments and where the, you know, the ideal conditions are not always available. Um, yeah, again, if you look at a different model of operation based on liquid and immersion cooling, um, this becomes a lot more feasible. So we're here to talk about the sustainable impact uh, immersion cooling can provide. Um, and we have to be realistic. There is no technology that allows to do it all. Um, but depending on the objective, immersion cooling can provide a sustainability impact or an upgrade of your current facility and make it more future proof. Um, enable you to uh, facilitate high performance compute applications. Um, immersion cooling can offer a lot of potential for growth. Um, we can help in assessing the potential value immersion cooling can create uh, for you as a user in, in a specific use case. Um, and we have created a wide variety of proof points and um, validations ranging from a warm water cooled operations in challenging climate zones, uh, high density applications, um, custom systems even, high performance GPU applications, but also, um, which I think is very interesting, POE improvements of existing tier four data centers. Um, all very challenging cases, um, but with immersion cooling, uh, this can be enabled. So let me explain a little bit on how this works. Um, some of you probably have seen immersion cooled systems over the years. Um, yeah, very quickly again on the technology. At the first glance, I think immersion cooling solutions all look the same from the outside. But within the systems, there are different concepts. Um, so it's really worthwhile to look into that into a little bit more detail. Um, from a Spurge's perspective, we are known uh, as a provider of the most energy efficient immersion cooling systems out there. Um, and this is all driven by the concept we use for circulation. Um, on the left top of the screen, you see um, in an abstract way how this is working. Um, in our case, our solutions are, are passive systems. There are no pumps, no forced circulation, all natural convection driven. The beauty and elegance of that system is that a flow is only provided and created where heat is being generated as well. Um, so there's no more efficient and effective system than natural convection immersion cooling. From an operational side, um, it has a lot of benefits. With no pumps, there's less overhead, uh, lower maintenance requirements, and so on. It makes it as well very easy to apply in an existing data center because um, everything is contained in one single plug-and-play system, um, which is great if you want to try out immersion cooling, pilot it in an existing environment. This is easy to apply. Um, and again, from a sustainable perspective, there are more advantages, um, no water consumption. The system needs water cooling, um, but in a closed loop. So you can bring water consumption down dramatically. A little bit later on this talk, we will look into a case. Um, and the other advantage is that this can run on warm water temperatures, um, even up to 45 degrees Celsius cooling inlet temperatures. Um, not for any type of hardware, but if this is the requirement, um, and later we can discuss some of those cases, this is definitely a, a solution to go with. So now we have shared some of the benefits of immersion cooling and as well how the technology concept works with natural con uh, convection driven circulation. Um, let's look at some examples of how this technology is being applied. Um, and as you can see, it's actually quite flexible where you uh, apply immersion cooling. There are some misconceptions about it that this is only um, interesting or attractive for greenfield projects. Um, it's definitely the most optimal environment, of course, to design a facility uh, tailored for immersion cooling. It can be drastically simplified, as you can see on some images. But let's start uh, realistically. In most cases, um, the, the immersion cooling starts in an existing environment, right? Um, for example, to upgrade the facility or to prepare it for high-density compute, uh, that means you have to work with raised floors and, and anything you can find in terms of IO containment or bus bars in an existing data center, as you can see on the left top. Um, there's no issue, there's no blocker, there's no negative impact. Um, immersion cooling will work and, uh, in an optimal form as well in an existing environment. Uh, will you have the most optimal impact? No, definitely not, because uh, you haven't uh, made any impact on your infrastructure. It's already there, you have done the investment. But it can be applied and it's a great way to start. Um, the most optimal form, as you can see on the other images, is of course in a simplified environment. Um, again, immersion cooling doesn't need much. It only needs the connections, water, power, and data. And the system itself will provide the performance. Um, so you could say that the data center 
becomes actually um, uh, a containment in a system which you need to manage and monitor and optimize, uh, not the room and the facility itself, uh, as long as you, of course, ensure this continuity of the connections. Um, the last thing I want to mention is immersion cooling is uh, drastically different than air cooled environments in terms of handling and operations. And um, that's all right as long as you're aware of it and start to get preparing for it. Um, that means from us, uh, as a solution provider point of view, we'll support you in the procedures, uh, guidance, of course, already early on in the project, trainings, and as well the right service tooling. Um, but I think it's interesting for some of you to see probably the solution from different angles. And um, so um, after, uh, after this slide, actually, we'll move on to a video where you'll get the impression of the products from different pers perspectives. Thanks for watching the video. I hope that was insightful to see the product from different perspectives. Um, so let's move on to a case because, again, um, we would like to provide you with some insight of the sustainable impact immersion cooling can have. And I think it helps to uh, really use a case for that. Um, and as you see now on the slide, uh, unfortunately, I would say um, the global PUE is still around 1.57. It moves around 1.6 um, over the last three years. And so uh, let's use that as an example case. I would say it's unfortunate, um, but uh, it's something immersion cooling can fix today we can bring that PoE dramatically down. Um, even if we don't consider high-performance computing needs, um, just the if energy efficiency impact, I think, is already worth consideration for most data centers globally, uh, purely sustainable impact focused. So we have seen projects where we go from a 1.5 to a 1.04 uh, PoE. Um, so there's a dramatic impact directly on the PoE measurements. Um, and keep in mind, the PoE metric does not show the impact on the fan energy that is eliminated from day one. Um, it's part of the IT side of the PoE, uh, but can, of course, be 10 15% of a server power consumption that's being eliminated from the day you start using immersion cooling, even if you don't change anything from the data center. Um, there are a lot more benefits, as you can see on screen here. And at some point, they all relate to energy efficiency and therefore cost and therefore as well a sustainable impact. Um, it, depending on the use case, you can see if you can provide a more optimal CPU performance. Um, it really depends on the application. Um, if the goal is to do uh, uh, to apply as much as possible compute power in a limited footprint, immersion cooling can provide that as well. Uh, we see in Europe a lot of attention, of course, for heat reuse scenarios, and uh, this is definitely uh, feasible. Uh, in all cases, the temperature should be higher, and the medium, uh, the cooling medium, uh, in this case being water, is a lot easier and efficient to transport with a lot less uh, losses compared to air. Um, so from a heat reuse perspective, um, it's not a heat pump. Um, let's take that myth out of the way, um, but it's a very optimal use of, uh, of heat that's already being generated anyway. Um, and the last uh, sustainable impact element, I did mention it earlier in the talk already, um, but I have to say in the last two or three years there's a lot more attention for this metric, uh, and I think it's a really uh, positive thing that data centers are now measuring their water consumption a lot better. Um, stakeholders simply require it as well. It's a, it's a valuable resource. Um, the advantage of immersion cooling it, yeah, it can be um, as much or an even more energy efficient than the most advanced air cooling systems um, of today, but without the dramatic high water consumption. Um, again, water is required, but in a closed loop, um, there's no water consumption, right? No water is wasted. 
So yeah, how does this look like from a more strategic perspective if it comes to sustainability? I just share some uh, of the impact metrics immersion cooling can definitely provide. But if you take a little bit a higher level, you could say that immersion cooling will enable hyperscale energy efficiency uh, in, on any scale. And I think uh, that can be a competitive advantage for a lot of users. Um, it can open up as well options, uh, for example, on site selection, um, it will, uh, uh, will go from more complex facilities to more simplified environments. Uh, that should impact as well uh, cost of build and speed of build. Um, and then again, some of the benefits I already mentioned, energy efficiency, water consumption, um, are all there. Um, and one, but uh, I would like to really mention that uh, as well today is that immersion cooling can provide one infrastructure layer that can provide energy efficiency for all kinds of densities and hardware requirements and performances. Um, so um, that's, I think, an advantage if you look at other advanced cooling solutions. They are always directly attached to a certain uh, hardware, um, a choice of hardware and application, um, and it might work really well. But if you look at it from a simplicity point of view and scalability, immersion cooling uh, can provide you that layer of uh, a future-proof infrastructure um, that can help you uh, scaling in a most sustainable way um, and at the same time uh, make sure that you're ready for the hardware of the next and the next next generation. Michael, a tremendous amount of information. Thank you so much. Truly, immersion cooling is the technology of today for enabling sustainable data center growth, but we've got a lot of questions coming in. You spoke about this during the project and the impact of PUE, but the question is, how much can immersion reduce PUE? Yeah, really good question. Uh, indeed, I've mentioned some of those, uh, some of those numbers. Um, it depends, of course, on what's the benchmark, right? where you're coming from. Uh, we see quite a wide variety of PUE being measured now uh, around the globe. Um, but let's just, uh, again, let's clarify this uh, based on a case. Um, one of our users, uh, we have seen one of our users sharing this publicly, actually, uh, so we can do so as well. Uh, their impact analysis based on the project run early with our uh, products um, was an estimate from um, a state-of-the-art operation of today with uh, PUE all year round of 1.4 to an operation with immersion cooling uh, with a solution like ours to 1.04. And this is in Europe and all year round. I just want to make that clear. All year round. I like that. That's critical to understand. You've actually just said that around the globe. I mean, Aspertus is putting this into companies that are thinking globally. So let's ask the question that's come in. Can immersion be used in hot climates? Yeah, that's the other use case. I mentioned it's all heat reuse, but if you take this to another environment where it's a bit more challenging and, and resiliency is, is required, um, yeah, then let's talk about a case where uh, we have done that, right? So in Asia, for example, our, our product is being applied in an environment where we need to cool with 48 degrees ambient temperatures. Um, and uh, within this project, there were no failures of, until today, no negative impact on performance as well. It runs as it should be. Um, so that's, that's a, I think, a really strong advantage um, about hot climates. People often think about climate zones, but also keep in mind there are also many industrial environments with no space with the right climate conditions. And the same applies here, of course. So let's get right to it. This, I love this, one, this wonderful question that's come in. You've spoken about the challenges, performance, sustainability, efficiency, cost, urbanization. Let's get right to it. How do we get started, Michael? Uh, what do we need to prepare? What do we need to do? You've got the engineering teams. You've got the capabilities, the solution architects. How do we get started? Yeah, again, I mean, this is already step one. Realize that you need to prepare for immersion cooling, right? It is different than your environment and operation of today. It's different than what you're being trained for. And we also see that coming from research uh, we, uh, we do ourselves is that, um, yeah, the reliability is, is key. So it's, at the same time, it's the strong, strongest driver for immersion cooling is uh, reliability, but there's also doubt about it. And the only way to take that away is to experience it yourself, right? Um, so start with the application you want to run and see what kind of demands you have on the advanced cooling side and then choose the solution of yeah, basically of your choice that's the best fit and we yeah of course we also can advise uh, while doing this we can assess in testing and validating service so you know exactly what's the optimal set points um, and start working with you on the business case based on that 
Uh, I think this question is really relevant. Again, uh, we, see, we see that coming from potential users. Um, they hold back uh, or delay adoption because they do not feel prepared. Um, and at some point, you will need to be prepared for liquid cooling and immersion cooling. And uh, the, the day to start this preparation is today. The day to start is today. Thank you, Michael. I'm so sorry we've actually run out of time. But to you and to everybody who spared us, thank you so much, sir. Yeah, thank you as well. It was a pleasure. It's always good to talk about sustainable impact. I think that's something that we really should drive uh, with the industry. So it was a pleasure.